Number six, a helicopter blade spins at exactly 100 revolutions per minute. Its tip is five meters from the center of rotation. A, calculate the average speed of the blade tip in a helicopter's frame of reference. Okay, so let's draw a picture. So it seems like there's this blade going around in a circle. All right, we'll put the center right here. And the, uh, the blade would be, um, this is a modern day Picasso. The blade would, the blade's tip would be somewhere out here, right, right here. And it says that the tip of the blade is 5.00 meters, 5.00 meters from the center of rotation. The problem also tells us that this blade will make 100 revolutions per minute. Okay, and our job is now to calculate the average speed of the blade. All right, so let's recall our speed formula. So let's write it down here in part A. All right, so speed is equal to the change in distance divided by the change in time, not the change in displacement. Distance and displacement are two different things. So how can we now uh, solve this? There's a couple of ways to do it. Um, let's do it this way. Let's just, let's just look at one revolution, okay? So when this blade goes around the circle, okay, it's traveling a certain distance, right? The tip is. So how do we find the distance that this tip is moving if it's moving in a circle? Well, you're thinking about it and you're tracing it and it's going around like this, right? Around the circle, just like this. And it keeps going around a full revolution. So what is that called in terms of a circle? How do you measure the edge of a circle? It's known as the circumference, right? So let's write down our circumference formula. So really, what in this problem, the distance that the tip of the blade is traveling is the circumference. It's, they're the same. So the circumference is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the radius. In this problem, it is 5.00 meters. I'll leave the unit out. It doesn't matter. Just know that the circumference will be in meters. So now, take out the calculator. 2 times pi times 5.00 comes out to be a value of 31.4. 31.4. And that is in uh, meters. Okay, great. So now I have three significant figures here. Why? Because this value had three. And that's the measured value. You might say, well, wait a minute, two has only one significant. Mm -mm, that's not a measured value. It's just, it's two because it's half of the diameter. Meaning the radius is half of the diameter, so we have to multiply it by two. But we only concern about significant figures for measured quantities. Okay. So we know the circumference, that's the distance that, um, yeah, let me change the color, make it a little more colorful. That's the distance um, that the tip of the fan blade is traveling. Now that's the distance it travels in one revolution. So what I can do now, if I know that that's the distance that it takes, right, to travel one revolution, and we also know that it did 100 revolutions per minute, that means if I were to take uh, 31.4 meters, right? And multiply it by 10. Excuse me, multiply it by, by multiply it by 100. Just just seeing if you guys were paying attention. And if I multiply it now by uh, 100, uh, what I will find now would be the total revolutions per minute, right? So that should make intuitive sense. So we have 3140. So 3,140. Uh, It'll be meters per minute. Okay, great. And how does this, how do the units work here? Well, remember that it's 31.4 meters per one revolution. And then I multiplied it by 100 revolutions per minute. Right? So technically, the R is canceled, leaving me with meters per minute. Okay? So I have my value uh, right here. So this, it, this is actually uh, the speed, okay? Notice how I have a distance um, divided by time. So this is actually the, the speed. I didn't even have to go back and plug it in. 
Um, if I did, let's say I plugged in the 31.4, watch. If I plugged in the 31.4, 31.4 meters in for the distance, then I would have had to have found out um, how long, right, does it take uh, the tip of the fan blade to go around just one time, right? Well, if it went, if, if, if in one minute it went around 100 times, right, then that means that in order to find the time for one revolution, I would then have to flip the fraction. So let me actually just do that on the top here. If I were to look at it this way, one minute per 100 revolutions, and I divided the two, right, it would be one over 100, which would work out to a value of 0 0.01 minutes per revolution. This now told me the minutes per revolution. So since I have the distance of one revolution, and now I have the time of one revolution, I can plug that in here. So 0 0.01, right? And that would be minutes per revolution, or just I could just write minutes. The reason why I can get rid of revolution is because it would be minutes per revolution, this would be uh, meters per revolution, and the Rs would cancel. But let's just leave it simple. Okay, when you do the math now, right, what happens? Well, it actually works out to be the same number. Plug it into the calculator. This would be meters per minute. So it doesn't matter how you solved it. Okay, we would have gotten the same answer. And uh, we should have three significant figures here. All right, I think that's, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, part B. So now it says part B. What is the average velocity over one revolution? So remember now that velocity is slightly different. It's the change in displacement divided by the change in time. So let's consider where we're starting in our picture. So let's say the fan blade is starting right here. Okay, let's call that, I don't know, displacement x. And it makes its trip around, right, the circle all the way on back and one revolution it stops. Where does it stop? It stops back at x. So the initial displacement was x and the final displacement was x. So what happens when we plug both of them in for the change in displacement here in the formula? Remember, the change in displacement is the final minus the initial. So if they're both x minus x, that works out to be zero. They cancel. And if this whole term is zero, the whole fraction goes to zero. And therefore, the average velocity is zero. Put whatever units you like, meters per second, kilometers per hour, doesn't matter. Okay, it's zero. That would be the average velocity. Guys, if this helped you out at all, please do subscribe. We would, uh, we appreciate it so much. And uh, I will see you soon. Thank you. Well, not see you. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay.